Good afternoon. Alan Iverson once said, I don't know any franchise players that come off the bench. I don't know any Olympian that comes off the bench. I don't know any all-star that comes off the bench. I don't know any former MVP that comes off the bench. I don't know any three-time scoring champ that comes off the bench. I don't know any first-team All-NBA that comes off the bench. I don't either, but I do know a good friend, Malcolm Brogdon. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. No, it's great to have you. We're really excited. This is a view from the rafters. I'm Luke Hornet. Uh I'm taking over. This is the first time we're doing it. Probably last as well, but... All right, so Malcolm, uh, you're among the top candidates for... <laughs> Oh boy, I love you. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> You're among the top candidates for uh six man of the year award. Um, why do you think you deserve it more than our fans? <laughs> if our fans could be a part of the race, they would win it. You could try to like offer your votes for them, possibly. And just kinda of... That's not legal. That's not team grade. It's not game. possible. It's not possible. Isn't thankfulness a pillar? <laughs> I don't know. All right. Uh, so the other week, uh, you spent some time at the United Nations uh, discussing clean water. Uh, would you like to talk about your work there at all? Yeah. Uh, I have a foundation that focuses on clean water. Um, we build clean water wells in East Africa, Tanzania. I went to the UN to speak about it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking about it. Like, How about you spend just like a little bit less time at the UN and a little bit more time with the US. <laughs> we missed Next you. Question. I think you're, you're gone for quite a while. It's felt like. You're only a day. Only a day. Well, days are long. Um, oh, so obviously, you know, from your time in Virginia and on, you've had the nickname as the president due to, or the president due to your striking resemblance to uh, number 44, uh, President Barack Obama, you know, your voice, your look, all that stuff. I'm sure you're familiar with this. Are you, are you familiar with that? Yeah. All right. Well, um, also you've been pretty politically or politically active. Um, and I was just wondering if you might have a future campaign on your own. I actually pulled teammates, uh, to see like what question they'd want me to ask you, uh, concerning your future campaign. And there's really just one thing that came around resoundingly, like every single person on the team was primarily concerned with this. So if you could, you know, answer from your, uh, not your delegates, but constituents, uh, they'd appreciate that. So uh, the one question I got from the team was unanimous. Uh, what would you do to decrease tax rates for high income earners? There's inflation's a big problem. So are there, you don't have any plans? I don't have, I don't have an answer. You don't have any plans for that? I didn't say I was ever running. You might want to prepare people say yourself. That. People say I should run. I've never said that, so. Okay. Well, you know, I'm, I think I'm not you could do it. I'm, I think not you could do it. I'm not obligated to answer that, so. I think you should be a little more glass half full on that one. <laughs> I think you can do it. Okay, I appreciate it. There we go. Malcolm Brogdon running for president. 20, how old do you have to be, 35? 20 never. 35, so you could have done it like 20, six years ago? 20 never. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Very young. <laughs> The joke there is that he's old because he spent all his time in college. <laughs> all right. Well, well, here's another one. Uh, so, Malcolm, you graduated from Virginia. Uh, bachelor's degree in history. Impressive. And a master's in public policy. Am I correct? Correct. Thanks, Wikipedia. Uh, from the prestigious Batten School of Leadership and Public Policy. Um, you think you're better than me? I don't like that one. <laughs> that was, you're going to discard that one. <laughs> all right. That's horrible. Yeah, that one was bad. That's that one, horrible. that one didn't really have anything to it. Too. That it was just, horrible. You just try to get content. You know, that's what it's all about. Just selling our souls. Here we go. Oh, here we go. In preparation for this interview, I read Intangible, the uh, story about Virginia basketball's rise. You know, during the Coach Bennett area. Um, you read that? I actually did. Sam gave it to me. Sam read it, and then he gave it to me, and I actually read it. Believe it or not, we sit next to each other on the plane. I would not read it next to you because I was embarrassed reading it. <laughs> I was, yeah. That would be bizarre. I if I saw you open that book. And I was like, I'm going to have to wait till I get. Yeah, it'd just be back. weird. It'd be yeah, weird. Yeah, no, it'd be like reading With the whole running joke of you being a And Virginia like you're guy. present yeah. throughout quite a lot of it. <laughs> Anyways, well, so in the book, several stories of your incredible work ethic were well documented. Like uh, over and over, people were talking about how hard you work. Uh, and now having been around you for, I mean, 
almost a full year, full regular season. I just want to ask, uh, what happened? What do you mean? In what context are you asking? I'm saying because a lot of people were talking about you having this incredible work ethic. Now I see you around. I mean, you're hardly present. When you are, you're <laughs> like, I don't see you on the training table. I don't see you in the weight room. I don't see you never, on the court getting your shots never. out. Never? You've never seen me? Well, I, I show up at the start of practice and I'm out first thing, so I don't really see you doing any of those things. I just see you at practice and that's all I see. So if you're not showing up before or this staying after, this isn't about after, me. I'm you... interviewing you, Malcolm. The questions okay. are: it's a one-way street here. That's fair. So, I am showing up. I am getting my work. Okay. Well, I'll have to take your word for it. Uh, so, you know, you had a very distinguished collegiate basketball career at Virginia. It's well documented, awards and all this kind of stuff. You know, um, and you played for the legendary national champion and imagine future Hall of Famer Tony Bennett. Go Sean Bennett. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, but your senior year, my junior year, we scrimmaged each other at Vanderbilt. Um, I probably remember you more than you remember me. Is that fair to say? I remember you. Oh, wow. Shucks. All right. Uh, well, yeah, I was just wondering concerning that scrimmage and all thing. Uh, like, did, did Coach Bennett say anything about me? No, actually, not a word. Not a Not a word. Like not even like I know you, passing. I know you think you're a Virginia guy. You're not. Well, who what? Yeah. If I get a grad degree from there, am I a Virginia guy? Technically, what, what you're a who. Do? I'm a double who because I got two. You're a double who. You're a who. I'm a, that's I'm a who. who. Call, that's, <laughs> what call, that's what they call people <laughs> who have two degrees. A who who. No, a double who, not a who who. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, maybe one day I'll meet him. All right. All right, so now it's time to, this is what we all came here for. And, uh, you know, so it's been well documented for Malcolm throughout this year. Um, he's a top candidate for a very prestigious NBA regular season award. I mean, it's, it's no surprise. Like, people have been talking about it all year. And uh, I bet you're wondering also, like, why we were so adamant about having you on. And, like, I know you didn't really want to do it, but it was like, no, we need to get him here. We need to get him here. We need to get him here. Well, I, I really can't believe the, like the powers that be allowed like this to be the time and place for it. Um, but it's how they decided to go. So it is without uh, much further ado that um, I would like to award you Malcolm Brogdon with uh, the 2022, 2023 Boston Celtics training room trivia, third place award. Um, so here's the award. Uh, third place award we do pregame trivia every day and on the road games with 90 minutes on the clock and malcolm this year battled through thick and thin no matter what happened i say he showed up every single day and he he really gave his best and um yeah third place is something really to be proud of uh it's signed by the you know the leader paul west of the of the trivia commission and i just wanted to award that for you and it also comes with um a little bag of Monster Trail Mix. I made a stop at Target the other day. <laughs> Malcolm is a very disciplined eater, but we've shared a bond about uh, secretly gorging on uh, Monster Trail Mix because it feels like Trail Mix, which is a good snack, but frankly, it's it's dessert. So here's your uh, your reward. I'm not I, taking. I'm not taking uh, the award. You, you, the you cheated. You cheated this all. Is blood money. If you, you cheated. Take the trail no, listen. Mix you don't take the award. No, listen. You, you cheated all year long to get that. It's not cheating. To get the first, because you're, you like you're first. Are you first? Are you first? What? what? Are you first? Oh, am I? I I haven't checked the... I just was here if to you, present this for you. Did you win? I mean, I was winning for most of the year, and so unless something happened in the last game... Remember, I was, I'm not I was thinking about that. taking it off. I'm not taking it. Just because you make a sheet of paper with my name on it, and it says third third place, I'm not taking it. That's that's not very gracious of you. That's I'm a pillar. I'm not taking it. No, I don't think gratitude is a pillar. Well, I guess you could, well, maybe I'll frame it and then it'll, it'll be a little more sure to do it. Also, I didn't cheat, but that's neither here nor there. I played by the rules of the game. You guys did not like it, but the results speak for themselves. So, yeah, that's about it. You know, a lot of fun we had here. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon, you know, I got to say, it's a pleasure having you on. You're the very first guest. Um, 
a day that will forever go down in infamy? Well, that's probably not it. That's probably not how I want to land in with that. That's not great. But yeah, thanks for having me on. And I'm sorry that you didn't want to accept your prestigious award. But we'll hang on to it for you. The this interview, was, it, this was solid until you, really? until you brought that out. Oh, what are you talking about? You did really good. Third is really good. And there's like five uh, competitors. Right. So third of five is like middle of the pack. I think third of five, if you st if you had a full team for five people, I think there'd be two starters. So technically, you'd be the sixth man of the trivia. Thanks, Malcolm. It was a pleasure to have you on. Love you. <laughs> uh, so uh, before we begin, we have a little uh, sponsor. Uh, this interview is brought to you by No Shovel Club. Tired of shoveling your driveway after March 1st? You're not alone. Founded by Dave Hauser, who was tired of... Long winters of removing snow in the bitter Wisconsin cold. The No Shovel Club is Central Wisconsin's fastest growing, time-restricted snow removal fraternal organization with 700 members and growing. Registration for the 23-24 winter is now open on Facebook. Sam Hauser, welcome to the show. <laughs> yeah. How you doing, man? I'm glad to I'm, be here. I'm great. Uh, are, you a, are you a No Shovel Club member? Oh, I am a diehard No Shovel Club member. Well, all right. Advertise will be happy to hear that. Yep, haven't yeah. shoveled since '97. So, yep. Wow, proud. I'm sure your dad's just beaming. He is seeing his son just drive through heavy snow. Yep, nothing like it. That's what they say. They yep. say that Sam he he drives through heavy snow. That's what they say about him. <laughs> All right. So uh, before I begin, yeah, I've got a little cheese board for you here in, in classic uh, Wisconsin fashion. It's it's a big. Uh, polite thing to do every time you go to a visitor's house you have to bring a cheese board so yeah um, i just wanted to have this for you we're gonna well, we're gonna do a little blind cheese taste test yeah yeah as the questions would, go on i would love to yeah. uh i don't they say the nba is a cap uh, copycat league and there's a certain uh, podcast that has a similar kind of food related bit and i was like well i needed to make this more core to my guests and so we've got the cheese well board. i really appreciate it oh go with that home so, away uh, from home yeah no we can go ahead and start here i'll Oh, have you close your eyes and we're gonna yeah. see if you can. Do you want me to? Are you? Yeah, I'll, I'll hand, <laughs> I'll, I'll hand you the cheese. Then we can. Oh, we got a cracker with it too. Yeah, there's a little. It's a little almond flour cracker too. So I'm trying to watch out for the mm -hmm. you know, playoffs. Spill them. Mmm, that's some good cheese there. Yeah. What is that? Target. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went last night. It was like nine o'clock, and I'm like, man, mm. what am I doing? Tastes like Swiss. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's Colby Jack. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> good for him. Maybe Pepper Jack. Is it Pepper Jack? No. It doesn't really matter. Is I, that I, Colby Jack? Is that one? Is that one? I don't even know which ones the cheeses are. This one's Colby Jack. Okay. So we actually did the Pepper Swiss. Jack. It was very mild, though. You didn't really get any. I didn't feel any. I didn't either. It was kind of disappointing. It's not exactly known for their cheeses. I'm not good at this. Tarje, but that's all right. <laughs> all right. So, um, Sam Hauser. So this is your first real like full season in the NBA last year, spending time in Maine and stuff. And believe it or not, Samuel Hauser, Samuel David, ours truly right here, he led the NBA in defensive rating. And also at a point very near the very end of the season, he was leading the league in percentage of defensive possessions that he was isolated against, <laughs> meaning teams keep trying to get him in the action although you lead the nba in defensive rating and so i'm just wondering is there any possible reason why you think teams would continue to do this well despite the evidence that states otherwise yeah um you, you know idea? i think it might just be my experience in the league you know Your experience in the league that you're kind of younger uh -huh. yeah i think that might be it that might be it yeah that's what you think it is i have no idea what you're talking about there <laughs> all right yep uh so yeah, we can we can also we can keep. Ah, it doesn't really matter. You can have some if you want. I'll Feel break, free to help I'll break yourself. Breaking the cheddar. Oh, love a good cheddar. Oh, it's I know it's not like Wisconsin Wisconsin cheese, but I did my best the night I could. It was after bedtime. And Target brand's good. So to make something happen. All right. Uh, so we got a new little segment here. Uh, if there's one thing that people in this team and organization know Samuel for, uh, what is it that they always say about you, Sam? They always say this about you. They say that Samuel Hauser, he It's from Wisconsin. No, nope, that wasn't it. It's, a, <laughs> it's just that oh, he's that Samuel Hauser, he's the Frank Caliendo of the NBA. Because <laughs> he's got elite impressions. So so we're it's gonna we're gonna do a couple of impressions here. Um here I'm gonna hand you the line. Okay. Uh first I'm gonna introduce the character and then I'm gonna mm. hand him the line. Please do. 
Uh, so this would be uh, Ryan Gosling's dad from the 2000 blockbuster film <laughs> Remember the Titans after his son is subbed out. Uh, so wait, once again, this would be Ryan Gosling's dad from the 2000 blockbuster Remember the Titans after his son was subbed out. Yep. Okay, here's the line. <laughs> Yost! <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's it. All right, that's the first one. Um, second one, we'll see if you're uh, willing. Uh, it's, it's one of two people. It's either our Australian performance coach, Jace Delaney, or, and or <laughs> physical therapist, Steve Mao. I've got a line for you if you, uh, sure. you want to give Would that one a to. shot. I would love to, this yeah. Is our, I, I might give it a shot after you <laughs> as well. Oi, me thinks you should put some ice on that, you should. <laughs> there you I go. Like, no, I feel you like should you lean it a, into it a little bit more. I is think it, you need to give usually it Usually when they talk, this is how that's... Yeah, Because yeah, fun fact it. about Australia is it's ba- basically uh, like Cockney English. Um, <laughs> and, it's, I mean, at least in my mind, I'm just taking this from... Uh, was it Kingsman? Kingsman, That's yeah. where I'm stealing yeah. this from. And Peaky Blinders is apparently show, but I don't really know... Because I think it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more subtle. Yeah, you should lean in. A little this more one. subtle. So it's something like, <clears throat> "Oi, me thinks you should put some ice on that. You should." <laughs> <laughs> it's so aggressive. <laughs> it's so aggressive. All right. Oh, here we go. Last one of the impressions. I'm, I'm getting warm. All right, uh, Sam, if you just read the below sentence. Uh, this one was actually. At the request of a certain teammate who will remain nameless. Fair. Um, yeah, not even a character. We just want you to read that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The talent. <laughs> yep. I hate you for this, Luke. <laughs> the talented baggage man <laughs> balanced and flagged my Jaguar bag. Wow. I, can I, can I give another to, shot at it? You want me to do it again? Yeah, I the feel talented like should... baggage man balanced and flagged my Jaguar bag. That was pretty good. There you go. Yeah, bring out the Midwest. Yeah, the talented me. baggage man balanced and flagged <laughs> my Jaguar bag. Something like that. Sounds that sounds yeah. about right. right. <laughs> yeah, I guess that one wasn't even an impression. That was just asking it's you just to read me. a sentence. It's yeah, just was... me to sound like me. <laughs> just... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So Sam, you know, you've been here in Boston. This is your second year. Uh, you've become a bit of a fan favorite, if I do say so myself. The fans really take to you. Uh, it seems that like you're in a place that seems like you love. They love having you here. Uh, I mean, I'm, would you hope to be here for a long time? Like, would you agree with that? Yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah, no, I think uh, that'd be great. And I do guess like you know, all good things must come to an end. So, uh, Brady or Rogers? <laughs> Rogers. Yeah, that's right. And that's it. That's all I gotta say. It was nice having him, wasn't it? Sorry, it was guys. Nice. Sorry. Trade me, release me. You guys, you guys think I'm crazy? Here we go. Farver Brady. Oh, Farve. Farve. Yeah, it's a no brainer. Uh, yeah, no. Here we go. Here we Wait go. For it. Jordan Love or Brady. Oh, Jordan Love, baby. The future is so bright in Green Bay. Mm. So Except bright. Except for during nine months out of the year. Yep. Case, it's actually, it's pretty... re- it actually gets dark really early in the winter. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Here we go. Uh, I don't know if uh, a lot of you knows, but uh, our Samuel is actually. <laughs> It sounds very condescending to say it that way. Uh, he's recently engaged, and he's planning on getting married this summer. Congratulations, Sam. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. No, thanks, guys. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, so I'd like to dedicate this last segment to the absolute best part of being engaged. And so this segment, uh, I'm just going to uh, – Welcome to Unsolicited Marriage Advice with Luke Cornett. <laughs> this is all you're going to get for the next, like, five months. I can't all wait. All right, here we go. So this is the first one. I want to hear what you think about okay. these. Uh, so, this is some good advice for you. Uh, okay. Marriage isn't a contest, so never keep score. Said the loser. Am <laughs> I right? <laughs> I, can, I can take that with yeah, me. I won't, I won't say the score. I can take that with me. I don't say the score of my own, but like, let's just say it looks like me and you are playing the whole fourth quarter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> You're done right about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> this is just my turn to say jokes, so I don't even, I'm not even sure why you're here. I'm just laughing. Uh, Let's hear a laugh. A good marriage is one where each partner secretly suspects they got the better deal. 
Well, I only had to pay my father-in-law two goats for my wife, so I'd say I got a steal. <laughs> <laughs> Do you yeah. tell that to your father-in-law? Uh, no, your that's wife like so. It used to be a thing of like dowries, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, hopefully he doesn't say this. <laughs> I'm, sending, um, I'm sending it to him. You know, so we had the cheeses. Uh, well, we have one more last quote. Should we go to the last quote, guys? And yeah, we can cut yeah, it. We yeah, can cut yeah. it. Yeah. No, this one's my. This one's pretty weak, but we'll. All right. So Fawn Weaver, are you familiar with Fawn? Fawn Weaver. You no. know Fawn Weaver. Yeah. Well, apparently, if you Google marriage quotes, her name will pop up. That's okay. how I. <laughs> yeah. Good. She's pretty famous for that, I guess. Um, so she once said, "Marriage is like watching the color of leaves in the fall, ever changing and more stunningly beautiful with each passing day." Oh, I'm sorry. I missed the last part of the quote. Uh, followed by months and months of bitter winter cold and darkness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a lot to look forward that, to. Yeah. A lot to look forward to. I, uh, I hope that everyone knows it's a joke. I like to say to my family, that was a joke. I love you guys. <laughs> and uh, you're the favorite part of my life. Um, yeah, that's about it. We, we didn't really end up working through all the cheeses. But Sam, Samuel. Would you like dessert? I would love dessert. Because you know, conversations are dessert. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Conversations are dessert. There we go. That's I'm so proud. That's I wanted you so to great. get mad that I said that. And then okay. You did. You actually kind of you set me up for it, and I was I devastated. Mm. And then you brought me back, just like a just father like, wishing to see his son just succeed. Just like Dumb and Dumber when he gets the moped. Yeah. There yeah. we go. Kind of redeemed, like that. Redeemed himself. You did redeem yourself. Well, everyone, uh, say thank you to Sam Hauser our wonderful guest on View from the Rafters. Uh, Luke Cornett takeover, I guess? First and only, probably last. It was a pleasure. Yeah, pleasure's all ours. Yeah. Welcome to View from the Rafters. Uh, we're absolutely privileged to have as our guest today, the man at the helm, Brad Stevens. Uh, we actually had the other president sitting in your seat earlier, Malcolm. But Malcolm. Yeah, thank you for coming on. Yeah, yeah appreciate thanks. it. It's good to be here. I thought we yeah. were already done after we were already started talking prior to yeah, no, I the official uh, announcement. I'm new at this. Okay, I'm a, it's a first year time thing. Kind of, am I right? Yes. Yeah, it's we're both second in, in for me. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Well, step ahead. <laughs> All right. So moves you made in your first calendar year as executive, trading for such pivotal players as Derek White, Malcolm Brogdon, return of Al Horford, as well as signing Diamond in the Rough, undrafted rotation piece Sam Hauser. Just how do you do it? <laughs> This feels like this. I thought this was going to be a lot more um, creative than talking hoops and roster. No, mm. you no, you what? It's you know. These are your you're around these questions. guys. You're around these guys every day. Yeah. They um, are all really good people who um, know how to impact winning from the roles that they're in. Some, you know, Sam is learning and growing into his role in the NBA, and and from the get go, looked like he was going to be able to. Um, to do that, and then the other three guys are just really proven. But as you know, the best teammates and guys that yeah. are willing to give of themselves um, for the team, and you know, every every good team needs that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Would you agree with that? I would agree. Okay. Good. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so also, you led the team to the finals in your very first year in the front office. Uh, Lee is there feels strong. is there anything you can't do? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, well, I never got mm-hmm. there as a coach, and then I certainly wouldn't have gotten there as a player. So yeah, there's a lot that I can't do. Mm. It was better. It's it's so my so I I think lead the team was was a little strong there. <laughs> not think, to us. Not okay, to us. Whatever. Yeah, I think that the the players <laughs> and coaching staff are responsible for all that stuff. Mm. I just try to stay out of the way. I, you know, I want to make sure the gum selection down by the practice court is good. Yep. I want to make sure that, you know, I, I stay out of the way during the game. I'm up in the suite way away from everybody. I never make a bad face. I'm always positive. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, I just yeah. try to stay out of your way. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't think I'm going to keep going with the questions that they gave us because I just don't feel like it's very authentic for me, if that's all right. All right. Um, do whatever you all want. All right, Bradley. Uh, welcome to the hot seat. Yeah. Something you're all too familiar with. Am I right? That's right. There we go. <laughs> nice. um, so you've obviously moved into a different role. Uh, 
but as you're going on day by day, like, do you ever just, you know, get that itch to just yes. get back out there and give it another shot? I do. I, well, I don't know about it. I miss teaching and I sometimes miss the, you know, I I'm, guess the chess moments of the game. I'm, I'm, I was, I was actually talking about your, your nine to five at Eli Lilly. Yes. If that's so that, you so there to. you go. So yeah. no, do I miss that? No, okay. I don't miss that. Okay. But, you know, there were some really exhilarating moments as a 22-year-old yep. working on marketing plans. That sounds, you know, at a desk. Thrilling. From 8 it's to 5 every comparable day. Comparable to the garden, isn't it? And, and yeah. now I wear sweats and shorts and yeah, you know, little, pretty much every day little, now that they've yeah. made coaching casual come back and trying to bring a little really, bit of formality. I've really never, yeah, yeah, I've really never gotten into the the suits like some other executives do. I don't really look at myself that way. Yeah. No, that's a, I wore a belt to the interview. You could have That's pretty reciprocated. That would have yeah. been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have one on. Uh, so how do you respond to those who note Coach Bobby Knight as a significant coaching influence given your uncanny sideline manner? It's like like looking in the mirror, no? So you mean you say that he was a significant influence because he I, – Because uh, I, when, I, when I first came here and I was playing for you, I felt like I was in like the 80s Hoosiers. Yeah. That's – I. Yeah. It, like – you pacing up and down the side it just seemed like so like yeah so looking. i have I, coach knight when i was growing up in indiana first of all that was a huge reason why i love basketball was were those yeah. indiana teams and coach knight when i was eight years old my dad played football at iu and when i was eight years old i was sitting 20 rows up when he threw the chair oh wow and so a little disappointed um, you never pulled that one out yeah well yeah you know of that uh, never got true. on film yeah um but Got a chance to watch all those teams, coached against him my first year as a head coach when he was at Texas Tech in the Great Alaska Shootout, oh, yeah. Yeah. and then introduced him when he spoke at Butler when I was still coaching there. And he told me right before, he said, keep this introduction short. So I scrambled, like you with your note cards here. <laughs> I scrambled. I tried to introduce him in a succinct, concise yeah. way. It's a great word. And before I got done, I felt this big paw hit my shoulder and i just said coach knight everybody yeah yeah i knew i knew what my role was yeah is that a shot i don't think i nope. would have okay. i don't yeah that's right i, I don't <laughs> think i would have been as good playing for him as i enjoyed rooting for him though don't count yourself short yeah you know you never know what you might be capable of although yeah. athleticism is generally like a pretty genetically set I think, type of thing i think that that would have i'm, I'm talking even been. probably maybe get through practice I think oh, I would have been a. I think I would have been um, if you the, make the worst sprints, athlete ever yeah. to play there. Which would be something. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'd like to think not. Yeah, thanks. That's just me, though, personally. Okay. Um, Eli Lilly, coaching at Butler, coaching for Boston, now president. Why do you find it so hard to hold on to a job? Yeah, yeah. No, that's one of the one of the challenges. Yeah. Is is I think people get sick af- of me. Yep. After a certain amount of time, tell you what. So uh, the clock is ticking again, <laughs> um, and so I'm just always on my toes. Yeah, know? yeah. Like the Lily one was fast. It was like, you know, I've, I've tried to tell the story that I had this passion for coaching, but yeah, they probably wanted to get rid of me within a year. Yeah, I realized they had made a mistake in hiring, and you know, this young guy doesn't know all that he thinks he knows, and isn't really helping us beat Pfizer in the pharmaceutical mm. market. So mm-hmm. let's get rid of him and send him to be a coach because. Yeah. You know, he played Try a little to, bit. Yeah. Yeah, push him off. low level. Him. But, yeah, so you just kind of – got to stay on your toes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with how, like, all this type of stuff works, but uh, we're going to need you to do a little bit of promo reads. Um, just okay. like, you know, algorithms getting clicks, just generating a little mm-hmm. interest in social media. I'm interested media. in these promo reads so that you, if have you could just after watching all your um, – after watching all your Jumbotron antics. Yep. That's one thing I do get to do. You get to watch the Jumbotron during do, the game. I do. I get to watch the Jumbotron and, yeah. like, you know, I can have a thing of popcorn. You know, I can, like, yeah, have yeah. a piece of pizza in the middle of the game. That's it's nice. kind of nice. Yeah. Sure. You could really emphasize the, just, like, you know, the delivery. Yeah. So look so, at the camera uh, three as well. Thank you. I was going to bring up uh, you against Golden State telling me you're a better pick and roll defender than this, and it ripped me to my core. 
but I was not going to bring that one up. When I was coaching you? Yeah, yeah. They ran a little like handoff thing. Jordan Poole, I think he came off at a three, and he might have gotten downhill and hit a layup. Right? It was here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. When but, Toscano Anderson went over the over the uh, scores table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got hurt, and Curry and, was going did he, berserk did he, as like, usual. What was that? That was in Curry that barely, year. Who like he fell and hit his like tailbone or something? Yeah, was maybe. that somebody else or was that? I don't know. It was also that was all in the bubble year. In the, so I told you, I told you in that game what? Because I don't uh, remember it very well. I think you said they, they scored twice, and you just said you're a better pick and roll defender than this. And I was just like, you know, usually Shouldn't I'm it? used to just getting berated verbally and like with just surface type things, but then to just say something actually real that you have to like accept. And that ingest like, in the moment. Like, yeah, no, I was like, don't want to face that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Is I he think... trying to play mind games with me? Right? Is he trying to tell <laughs> I'm me? Sorry. Is he I've trying been... to tell me something? What, what I've is been he so here? used to having to read behind, like between the lines on, <laughs> yeah. on comments. Yeah. Uh, I think you could read this promo, though. I think this one's a little safer. <laughs> What's the secret to running a successful NBA franchise? The answer might surprise you. Next on View from the Rafters. Can I can I take a guess I at it? I don't know. I'm I only in my second it? year. You should ask Zarin. My my guess at it was uh, have had Danny Ainge draft franchise altering talent. No, no question. Okay, I it feel was, like that it was, was also a- the, <laughs> it was also the key to being good again very quickly was the fact that yeah he had those Brooklyn picks and we just got to you know yeah, quickly yeah. turn from building to good. Yeah, Not, we weren't we weren't great, but we were good, and then we built up and. Hopefully yeah. we're in the mix. We'll see. Well, but yeah, that that kind of helps. Yeah, I, th- I would say so. Yeah, at least in my personal experience, the having top, good players generally helps. What was in that? I'm trying to think of uh, the top ten draft picks. Have we had more? We've had Smart at six and Jason and Jalen at three. Yeah. Sam Hauser, sixty-one. Was he sixty-one? He was sixty-one. Yes, he you was. Yeah. I, that's an interesting pick. one. Or. Yeah. However many two ways signed that night could be anywhere between yeah, 61 someone could have technically and 74. Yeah. Yeah. I like to think 61. 60, 61 to us. <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah. That's what we say. Yeah. Yeah. What is if – yeah. What's, what do they call the last pick in the draft? Uh, Mr. Irrelevant. But I say I Mr. Incredibly the Relevant. I coached the last pick in the draft probably oh, ever. Right? Yeah, IT, right? Isaiah? Yeah. yeah. He was amazing. Yeah. I played with him in the little USA basketball thing. That was – he can score the basketball pretty well. Oh, my gosh. Well. In his sleep. He's I, amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Too, what other what other great, like, uh, what do they call these? Promo reads. Pro, these aren't really promo reads. These are um, teasers, right? Teasers. Yeah, they're not promo. I'm reads. sorry, I'm new to the business. Well, yeah. yeah, my mom would be ashamed. Get your sure. media stuff straight. Yeah, I'll try. Yeah, I'll do my your best. Your mom would be ashamed. I'm gonna learn. <laughs> yeah, trust me, I already know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we actually have some some questions from the fans. Oh, from the, yeah. from the live, Who are the fans? From the live stream. <laughs> uh, we've got questions from the live stream. So oh, okay, live stream. I'm just gonna I'm gonna pull. I have I have we you printed have a, them and immediately sent okay. them to me via paper. Can I give you my teasers back? Yeah, I'll you just can. Put them right yeah, you can just put them there. You might want to save them. Okay. Uh, oh, so here's one. Uh, <laughs> wow, I just really like that cornet kid. He just seems to be great for the team. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that one's that one's not even really a question, was it? That was just a comment. Yeah, no, I think that one, you should probably talk to Joe about that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That one's probably not directed for me. Yeah. I do too, I think, but but I like the, you know, but the eclipse was obviously yeah. foiled. It has its moment in the sun, game. I'll tell you that much, it ironically. Had its, it had its yeah. moment. It had it, yeah. it had its moment. Now when people start shot faking it and driving it through the chest. Yeah, it's a little bit less effective. I'm thinking I just punched the guy when I. Well, one of the down. things that one of the things that's good is is if you're not the highest uh, jumper, there we go. Yeah, you land quicker. Yep. then you can get back in front. That's the one secret. of the keys. Not everybody can jump on a shot fake. See, that's those why those that can't jump. See, when Rob it. does it, it's you can never drive and then drive back out and then drive, and <laughs> he still right. doesn't come down. That's right. That's so right. you know, all right, that's we right. got we got another one from the audience here. Okay, uh, <clears throat> is it same general topic? Uh, I've, I'm reading it live, so how okay. am I going to know yeah, what the point. question is? How am I going to get it off Twitter? A predetermined questions. That'd be weird. Uh, yeah. So this is uh, next guy. Uh, yeah, I absolutely agree with that last guy. Are we going to have the cap space to keep that cornet around? <laughs> was, sir, yeah, I don't know. It's just what this, they're saying. What the people are saying. This, I, this yeah. feels like it feels like it's these are all in the ask Zarin bucket. Mm, okay. Well, I thought, you know. 
top dog might you know have some say so <laughs> Uh, all right, we have we have time for one last question. If that's okay, all right. that's fine. Right. Yeah, no, all this right. is the, the question that just came out really well thought of by you and the live stream. By the live stream, I'm just reading. I'm just right. the I'm just the uh, intermediate. Did you did you really write these, or did somebody else do that? Did you put your like mental energy into it, or was this because I've had a notes, I've had a notes app for a couple of weeks, and I've been fantastic. No, but these are not all the other stuff. Once again, these are live questions from who, who the would, audience. Let me ask, can I ask one more question? Yes. Who would be, you had Malcolm on, who's a great interview. Who else did you have on? Sam. Sam, yeah. number 61. Yep, pick. Um, Mr. 61. And did, like, who would be your favorite interview on the team? You know, I, this is just something I was, I was born up, raised with. I like to just be where Next. my, I like to be on where. view from the rafters. I like Go to ahead. be where my feet are. And so I would say that this is the best interview I could possibly imagine. That's, I'm just there's no, living in the moment. So this is what you just talked about, how much more you have to learn about the media. There's no media person in the world that would say that. Well, it sounds like there's an opening in the market, huh? Yeah. No, I, I would have I said seize Blake. seize that little. Or, you know. Like, I, I did pull out with Malcolm, like, the like oh, we couldn't get Blake? Yeah, so, uh, so you, you really meant Because that's how you insult your friends. Um, we have one last question from okay, the fans. Okay, if, okay, it's, okay, if that's all right, if we have the time, do we have the Plenty of time. Okay. Mm, yeah. All right. I just ran submitted. Uh, yeah, that Cornette kid pulled over and helped me change a flat on Storo the other day. I heard he has an incredible wife and two beautiful children, too. It would just be a travesty for the city of Boston to let that courageous and, dare I say, incredibly handsome fellow go. Well, that's just my two cents. Have a great day. Yeah, it doesn't really seem that there's a question in that one. Either. Do you really know how to change a tire? I do know how to change a tire. Have you ever done it? I've done it twice. Yeah. To help someone else? I have not. Because <laughs> that takes well, away that. So they must have seen the other seven think, foot two guy walking around that changes tires. Oh well, other than this guy, family. you're saying. Yeah. No, I only do it in really congested areas of cities. That's I thought you were talking okay. about asking like remotely, because that's you know you, it's dangerous out there, and so you want to do it. Yeah, this was on the way to the game the other day because you know I'm always just you know, one of the first guys at the gym, so I was like, I have plenty of time. I'm going to come over and I'm going to stop and help this guy. Get there to guy. watch that staff game that's a yeah. high-level pickup. Yeah, that is uh, – <laughs> it really is. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we really didn't get to anything else. The live stream questions were not questions. Yeah, I know. I think we could work on a little next time of making sure that the people were actually submitting questions because it, it was a lot more like comments. It was a lot like, more comments, and it was really just one subject. Yeah, Two but subjects. Apparently, I, was, and, I have my earpiece. I have my uh, – editor and he was saying that pretty much like all of them were that so you Got decided it. to kind of filter it down to what you could show that's how it goes i guess um yeah, yeah well no it was uh it was great to have you on thank, thank, you. thank you brad yeah any last words uh you know no, or, it was great to be on yeah. i appreciate you taking the time and keeping a notes a, a yeah notes i'm not proud of it but your phone. i thought it was i thought it was yeah. really well thought of i bet the malcolm and sam pieces are better but <laughs> don't you say that <laughs> Yeah, we had a great time. Appreciate great time. it. Great time. Thanks. Luke Cornett, you from the Raptors. Brad Stevens. Thanks for having us.